Our gospel reading this evening will differ from the way we often have gospel texts read to us in worship. Instead of a single gospel text, I will have us reflect on several, a series of several texts. The first of which comes from the first chapter of St. Luke. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Then a little further in that first chapter of St. Luke. The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then from the first chapter of St. Matthew, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And now from the 14th chapter of St. Matthew. But when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then this from the fifth chapter of St. Mark. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Then back to St. Luke, this time from the 12th chapter, where Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And then finally, this from the 14th chapter of St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So you get the point, right? The command comes via all four of the evangelists. Sometimes the command comes from Jesus. Sometimes it comes from an angel. Sometimes, as our first reading showed us, sometimes the command comes to us through the prophets. But the command is always saying the same thing, right? And the command is this. Do not be afraid. This command is of no small concern in Scripture. It is not only given by many, it is given many times. And it is quite often the first thing that is said before another issue is addressed. Do not be afraid. If only it was that simple. Hmm? And of course, it's not. All of these times we've been told, do not be afraid, yet we just can't help continuing to be afraid. Why is this? Well, probably because fear is an emotion. And so the problem is, how do you not feel something that you're feeling? Hmm? How do we stop ourselves from feeling something we are feeling. Feelings and emotions, these things, these things belong to the realm of the irrational. So simply and rationally telling ourselves, just don't do it, just stop, is really not going to work. There has got to be a different way to be faithful to this command. 
We have to do this differently, this command, that we might be, than the, than the way we might do other things we are commanded not to do, like the way we are commanded not to kill or not to steal or not to bear false witness. The way we deal, truly deal, with all emotions is not by trying not to feel them or by trying to ignore them or set them aside or trying to work around them. No, the way we really deal with our feelings and emotions is to work through them. It is to honestly confront them, to wrestle with them, with the goal of eventually getting past them. So the way to not be afraid is to go through our fears. The truth in this understanding that in order to get past our emotions, we must work through them is probably most easily seen by many of us when we think of the emotion we know as grief, which really isn't a single emotion. Because those of us who are trained to do grief work with others know that grief unfolds in a progression of emotions. And thanks to the work of people people like Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, we can identify the stages of this progression. We can name them, we can face them, and in this way, we can begin to work through them. Now, fear may not have the same progression of emotions as does grief, but naming our fears and facing our fears seems crucial in being able to work through our fears and in this way ceasing to be afraid. So this is one of the things we are about this year in our Synod Assembly. We aim in these days to work together to identify our fears and then work at facing them together. And this together, doing this together, seems particularly important to me for doing things like this together is what Synod, I think, is all about. This word synod literally means to walk together or to be on the road together or perhaps most literally to be in the way together. And quite personally, I like that last one the best because as we read in the book of Acts, one of the earliest ways of identifying the followers of Jesus was to call us people of the way. Hmm? So synod means to be in this way together. And we do this not only because we heard the call of discipleship as the call to be part of a larger whole, but also because we can be much more together than I think any of us can be alone. In terms of facing our fear, doing so together means much more than simply misery loves company. It's truly about allowing the experience and wisdom of others to speak to those places in our lives where we are struggling. And conversely, it is a willingness to give of ourselves to others in their struggles. Several weeks ago, it was my privilege to worship with the people of Salem Lutheran Church in St. Francis, Kansas. For those of you who do not know St. Francis, Kansas, think the Colorado border and come 30 miles this way. Think the Nebraska border and come 30 miles down, or about that. And that's where St. Francis, Kansas is. It's about the furthest northeastern, or northwestern, rather, Uh, congregation that we have in our synod. 
Well, I arrived at, at, at Salem Lutheran Church there in St. Francis well before the service started. In fact, I was the first one there. And one of the second persons there was a woman by the name of Dorothy who was introduced to me as the oldest living member of the congregation. And Dorothy is probably well into her 80s. And after she was introduced to me, we sat and we talked for a while before the service began. And in making conversation with Dorothy, I, I mentioned to her, to her how concerned I was for the drought that the farmers of her area were suffering under. And Dorothy just kind of looked at me with knowing eyes and said rather matter-of-factly, well, you know, it's been dry here before. <laughs> so now with Dorothy's comment in mind, I think of this drought a little differently than I did before. It is this wisdom of experience that is one of the things we have to offer to each other. It may not take away our fears. Dorothy's wisdom certainly didn't take away the drought. But it does help us see them maybe a bit differently. And because of this, help us along the way of working through them. From St. Francis, Kansas to St. Louis, Missouri, the purpose of this synod is to walk together and face the living of these days in the way together. In terms of facing our fears, facing them together is what we aim to do as synod in this assembly. So the sermon this evening is going to end with a little assignment. Let's call it that. I want you to think for a moment about this. What are the fears that you think of when you think of what it means to live as a child of God in these days? What are, the th what are the fears you have for the church? What are the fears you have for the church in whichever form of church you want to think about, whether that be congregation or synod or beyond? And as you think of these fears, try to be as specific as you can be. Exactly what is it of which you are afraid? Now, there are note cards and pencils on your tables this evening for your assignment. Hmm? I'd like you to write down your thoughts on one of those note cards. So if you would pass those around your table. Um, and I don't know that there are pencils for everyone. We may have to do a little sharing, a little more togetherness. Hmm? I want you to write down on this paper one or two or maybe three fears that, that you think of. And then when the offering is taken around your table in a few moments, along with the other offerings you're going to put in that basket, put those fears in there as well.